Hello, I'm Paul with Diamond Billiards, and today we're going to present you the procedure for leveling a diamond pool table. And before we start, let's go over the tools that you need to do the job properly. So to adjust the frame of the table, we use a, a three-quarter inch open-end wrench. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just like that. And then for adjusting the wedges that are in between the slate and the frame, we use a socket wrench with a, with a 3 8 inch socket on there. That's the head of the bolt that uh, we use for adjusting the wedges. Uh, this is something that I use. It's a right angle adapter for my drill, and I use that for the center level or from underneath. It's a little easier to, uh, to spin those out with a drill than it is to do it with a socket wrench. So this is optional, but it's uh, highly recommended. And then I use a uh, small variable speed drill for uh, using the right angle adapter. And also, in this case, uh, the table that we have here uh, has the rails on it with no skirts. And that allows us to, to make the adjustments to the wedges with a 3 8 inch nut driver adapter on this drill rather than using a socket wrench underneath the skirt of the table, which is typically how it's done when you're installing it in somebody's house or you're at a tournament because the table's already assembled. <clears throat> For the purposes of this discussion, we're going to uh, use it with the skirts off of the table. <clears throat> then the most important tool is our machinist level. And this is a, a Starrett 98-12. And this is a product that's been around for maybe 100 years. It's a, it's a very old product, but it works great. And uh, they're available from distributors all over the country. And it's, uh, it has a cast iron base that's machined to be very flat. And then it has a glass vial that you can read the bubble with. And it has calibrated lines on there. And each line represents five thousandths of an inch per 12 inches, the, the end to end of this level. Now we use a 12 inch level because the space between the wedges is just slightly more than 12 inches, and that way we can position the, the level so that it's right in between a wedge that would be here and here. And uh, this table we've marked up for the purposes of this video, and we'll get into that part of it later. But that's, that's the basic tools that you need. Now, optionally, you could have a, uh, an, a carpenter's level, and you can set this on the carpenter's level to do the frame, but you can do it with just the machinist level, so that's uh, is optional, and it depends on you know, your personal preference for that. Um, the leveling basically is done in two parts. First, we level the frame of the table, and then we level the, the slate, making adjustments to the slate itself. And before we get into the leveling part of it, I want to show you the leg of the table and how that's adjusted. And it's a little easier to do it with the leg off the table than it is to get the camera down low where you can see this. But there's a, uh, a piece of all thread that's accessible through the slot right here. And there's two nuts that are stacked on top of each other. The one that's on top is your adjustment and the one that's on the bottom is a lock nut that you don't ever touch. It's locked to this block of wood, and when I spin the nut on top, I'm pushing this piece of wood out to raise the frame of the table. Now, when we install a table, we start with all four legs as low as they will go, and then we just want to adjust the legs that are low, and the highest spot of the table, we want to leave it alone and just raise the other parts up to, you know, the part that's already the highest part of the table. So, that's the legs. The next section is really about uh, the leveling of the table and the first goal is to get the four corners of the table so they're all the same height. So we need to make some measurements in order to get that accomplished and so what we'll do is we'll take our machinist level and I've already marked with chalk on the slate where the measurements are to be made and one of the goals in making the measurement is uh, to set the level in the same position every single time. Which is not really very easy to do, but I use the outline of the tube so where you can see the, the glass vial. And I take the outside edge of the tube and I line it up with a diamond. And this one is reading one line low, so it's reading five thousandths low in this direction. So I'm just going to put these markers on the table so you can see what the table looks like in total. And it's just going to be showing you where the table is low. 
So it's low this way. And here, it's low this way. And here, it's also low this way. And here, it's low this way. Now it's low towards the side pocket. And it's also low towards the side pocket. And it's low towards that corner over there. low over there. Now I'm going to make measurements here also, but really for the purposes of leveling the frame, we just need these measurements right here in order to get that done. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make these measurements so you can see what the table looks like in total. At least a rough idea. The arrows is, is just pointing to the areas of the table where it's low, but it's not quantitative. So there's no numbers associated with it right now. Now while I'm making these measurements myself, I'm trying to get a picture in my head of what the table actually looks like. And that'll help me to figure out which legs I want to raise and how much I want to raise them. Okay. So now if you look at the arrows, basically this table is leaning towards me, meaning this rail is lower than the other long rail is. And it's low from the, the corners to the side and low from the corners to the side. Now what you couldn't see on the video is uh, from the measurements here, it's, it's more low this way than it is this way. So this end of the table is slightly lower than this end is, and then this side is lower than that side is. So what we wanna do is we wanna adjust these two corner legs to bring these up and then We'll revisit our, our measurements down the rail, and then we'll decide how much to raise those two corners. And then hopefully when we get finished, that all four corners will be the same height, which is the goal of doing the frame. So we're going to take our three-quarter inch wrench, and since this is the low end of the table, I'm going to raise this one first. Now, this is kind of arbitrary. Uh, different people do it different ways and you can get to the same end result depending on where you start. But I just like going to the lowest spot and starting putting pressure there first. So I'm gonna raise this leg probably about three turns and see where that gets us. Now that measurement's pretty close to level. I'm still a little bit low that way. So I'm going to raise this up another turn. Now at this stage, I'm not trying to make this level across here. I'm just trying to make it read the same thing from here to here as it does from here to here. So right now, I look at my level, I may be one thousandths low this way. I'm about three or four thousand slow this way, so I actually raise this one up just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna back this one off just a little bit. Okay, so it's reading one line low both ways. So now it's like this. And this leg and this leg are the same height. Now I want to do the same thing at the other end of the table. So I'm almost one line low towards the corner. And 
the same thing here. So I'm going to start out just raising this one turn and then make my measurements again. too much. So I'm going to back this one off just a little bit. Okay, now the arrows are showing me where it's high and it's low. But when it's level, then the there's no arrow. So I'm going to just turn the cards upside down. So right now this is level across here. I'm low to the center on the other rail. Now I've adjusted these, so I'm going to remeasure these. And this one is about two lines low this way. That's roughly ten thousandths of an inch per one foot. And here I'm almost three lines. So that's ten plus 15, so it's roughly 25 thousandths drop from here to here. And then we'll look on this side of the side pocket and see what it looks like. And I'm just a hair over two lines low this way, which is 10 thousandths. And I'm just a little over 15 thousandths low this way, so I'm roughly 25 thousandths low from here to here, and then 25 thousandths low this way from here to here. So that tells me that that corner is the same height as this corner. So now this corner and this corner are the same height, this corner and this corner are the same height, and if that is still reading the same thing, then I know my four corners are about the same height. Then I can go around and actually make some measurements and put some numbers on the table, and then that, at that stage we would start adjusting the, uh, the wedges under the table. Right now, I'm about 7,000 slow this way. And I'm about three or 4,000 slow this way. So this leg is just slightly lower than that one is, but not by very much. So I'm gonna just raise this just a little bit and try to get it back to where it's reading the same thing from here as it is from there to here. So I'm about 5,000 slow this way. And 5,000 slow that way. Okay, now we can start making some actual quantitative measurements. And for the purposes of this video, I marked on the table places where I would typically make measurements to level a pool table. And the lines are roughly the length of the level and there's a position where we would uh, like to make the measurements, which these are all positioned you know, in between wedges. That way, if, if it's low this way, if I raise this wedge, then it's gonna raise this up. So if it's, if it's low like this and I raise this, then it, it makes this better. Because it's low this way, if I raise this, it makes both of them better. And that's, that's what we're looking for in this table, or we're looking for adjacent low spots. You know, I, I refer to this personally as a low, low leveling system because I'm looking for adjacent low spots and I'm using the wedges to elevate those up. Now this one, it was reading five thousandths low this way. So I, just as a convention, I'm gonna mark the number on the side of the line that it's low. And it was five thousandths low this way. Now you might not be able to see that well from the camera, but We'll go around and explain what we're doing as we go along here. And this one is roughly 17 thousandths low this way. About 
11 thousandths low this way. But this time I'm going to make a measure here at the side pocket also. Because I'm adjusting the wedges, uh, I want to know which side of the side pocket I'm going to start on. And here it's 5 thousandths low here. And here I am. Fourteen thousand slow that way. And I'm about eleven thousand slow that way. I'm between one and two thousand slow. I'll say two this way. And probably 1,000 slow this way. Now one thing I'd like to point out, <clears throat> the last leg adjustment I did was on the corner pocket down there. And this table is built on a cabinet. So we've got the legs holding up a cabinet and then the slate is sitting on the top of the cabinet and then the rails are bolted through the slate so the rails are clamped down against the slate and attached to the frame of the table. So when I raise that leg I'm pulling the, the, the side panel of the cabinet up like this. This end of the cabinet comes up just a little bit so when I raise that leg this measurement right here will come a little bit high not as much as that one does but actually you can, you can see the difference when you adjust the leg and you come to the other end of the table, they interact just a little bit. So that's why, you know, I go back and forth and check just to make sure that nothing major has changed since I made the, uh, the leg adjustments. Now I'm going to measure this side. And about 16 well here. Here. And this measurement, approximately 5,000 slow there. And here I'm about 13,000 slow towards the side pocket. Sixteen thousand slow towards the side pocket. Now, for the purposes of evaluating the table, I want to also look at the center of the table. Now, the lines that are across the center are positioned in a way that they're showing me where I have adjustments. So, <clears throat> the space in between this line and this line, there's a wedge about right here. It's just inside of this diamond near the side pocket. And I have the same thing over there, and in the space between those two lines, there is also a, a wedge for adjusting the, the center of the table. So I just want to get a, a quick reading on where I'm at in the center of the table as well. And that'll help me make my, my strategy for what needs to be done to level this. Now I'm about uh, oh, 2,000 slow towards the middle. That one is basically level. And this one is about four thousandths this way, just low towards that way, and this side. Six thousand slow that way. And we'll see what it looks like across the middle there. And 
and it's between two and three thousandths low towards the camera. And this one's actually a thousand slow this way. So what we have is basically that in the table, the center uh, wedge needs to be adjusted up to bring the slate up so that both sides are reading level. This side's just about reading level. I can adjust that wedge a little bit. And then I'm going to be bringing up the, uh, uh, the side rails. And it's low, low low, low, low. So if, if I adjust my arrows now to where, I, where I'm at, I'm, you see the arrows are low coming this way and they're low going that way. So low, 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 low. So this is the lowest point of the table because my arrows are pointing to the lowest spot and they're pointing this way. So this is the wedge where I want to start putting pressure on the side rail. But before I do that, I'm going to go and adjust the end rail and then I'll come back and start working on the edges of the table. So for this, I'm going to use my drill and the machine problem. I'm just going to put it on one side and then I'm going to put the, the drill on the, the head of the bolt that pulls the wedge and I'm going to watch the level. And I'm going to go slowly. And it's starting to come up now. And that's pretty level there. Here, it's low, low, and it's low, low, low. So this is the wedge that I want to start adjusting first on the side rail. So I'm going to move these out of the way because I'm moving the machinist level back and forth. I just have the arrows on there for you to visualize what I'm doing. When I'm doing this out in the field myself, I've been doing this so long now that I, I sort of can get a, a picture of the table in my head and remember it as I go along and not have to mark it like this because normally when you level a table like this, the cloth is on it and the level is sitting on the cloth and obviously I can't mark the cloth with chalk. So, you know, this is just a way that I could illustrate what we're doing where it's a little easier for you to see in a video than trying to get a, a camera directly over the level and watch what I'm doing precisely at each moment. So, so right now I'm just going to make some so I've got this roughly level across here but I'm still low this way and I'm still low this way, but not as much as I was before. So, we're going to put some more pressure on these wedges. Okay, now, for purposes of illustration, I'm going to mark what it looks like now after I made these adjustments. So now, instead of 14,000 slow, this is 1,000 slow. 
and this one was reading 5,000 slow this way. And it's reading about, uh, about 3,000 slow. And this one was reading 11 thousandths in this direction. And now, it's between one and two thousandths low this way. Now, if, if you picture the slate as coming downhill from the corner pockets to the, to the side pocket, and I just brought these up a little bit, so obviously this first measurement close to the side pocket was directly affected. However, uh, by putting pressure on these wedges and I'm pulling the slate up, this measurement also will be affected a little bit. So we're going to check that before we go too much further. And right now, it went from 17 thousandths low to 11 thousandths. So it moved six thousandths of an inch just by raising these two by the side pocket. And then let's look at this one over here because we did something similar on this one. And this one is about 8,000 slow and it was 11,000 slow. Okay. So we want to put just a, a little bit of pressure on this middle wedge. I don't want to bring this to level, but I'm just going to bring it up some, and then I'm going to do the same thing there, and then I'm going to read these three here, and then make my most of my final adjustments on these two wedges right here, because they interact with each other. People ask me why I do it this way, and I said, well, you got to sort of have to sneak up on level, because the adjacent wedges uh, the measures interact with each other. Oh, this one, I'm going to put just a little bit of pressure on it as well. But I'm still, still low this way, and I'm still low this way. Now let's see where we're at here, because by raising this one up, now I made this one more low in this direction. And sure enough, I went from 1,000 slow. To about 3,000 slow. And then across the side pocket. We're level. Now one thing I, I'll caution you on doing this is a lot of people will tell that one's level so I don't have to mess with it anymore, it's good. No. It's just level for 12 inches. I'm still low this way, this way. It's just flat for 12 inches, and I'm still low this way and this way. So this is still lower than the ends of the rail are, but it's just flat right here across the side pocket. Now this one is reading a couple thousand slow that way, and this one still should be reading about the same. Actually came up a little bit. So now we're about 8,000 slow that way. And so we're gradually sneaking up on it. Now, in our, uh, in our mind, what, there's a tolerance for leveling. And what we're trying to achieve by the time we get done is from here to here, I want the whole error to be five thousandths of an inch or less. Right now, if I take these two numbers and add up, this is eight, this is two. So that's 10, so that's, that's about twice as unlevel as we would like it to be. And this way, we're eight and three, which is 11. So we still need to come up a little bit, but not as much. So again, I'm just gonna put a little pressure on both sides of the side pocket. Now I'm reading just a little bit low that way, just maybe a, a thousandth or two. Now I'll pull this one up maybe a thousandth of an inch, and now I'm going to raise this one up 
and I'm not going to quite get it to level because by pulling this one up, it's going to make this one worse to the side pocket. And I'm just going to kind of work my way to it. So now between, you know, I'll do it just a little bit more. I want to get to between two and three thousandths low. Okay. So now we're, say, three thousandths low there. And then we're about five thousandths low that way. about a thousand slow this way. We're between one and two thousand slow this way, and this one should still be more than five thousand slow. And it is you now just about right at five thousand slow. So we're gonna just give this a little bit of pressure. quite the level. And this side a little bit of pressure. And this side a little bit of pressure. Okay, now we're, we're very close. So this one now is level. And this one is maybe actually a thousandth of an inch low that way. Same thing for that one. This one is level. And maybe this one is one thousandth low that way. So now we're one thousandth low, level then one thousandths, one thousandths level. So, you know, if you add up these two, that's one thousandths off between here and here. And if you add up these two, it's two thousandths off between these two corner pockets. So that's within our, our spec. Okay. Now, let's, before we go and address the other side of the table, which is basically similar to this one. Uh, you know, we raised these two wedges and we raised these two wedges. And so what's happened is now the slate has been pulled up like this, and before we were 2,000 slow level and we were 4,000 slow this way. Now by raising this up, this is gonna be more low this way, and it's gonna be low towards that, and you know we're making it low in the middle. And so when we do that side, we're gonna do the same thing, and hopefully when we get finished, it's gonna be the same thing with respect from here to here as it is from there to here, and the same thing on that side. So I just, I just want to point out that when we're raising these outside wedges, we're actually, uh, nothing's raising the center up, so we're raising the outside and the center staying in its position, so we're actually bending the slate like that, and it's sort of downhill towards the camera now. Okay, we took a, a brief pause, and when we ended, we adjusted the wedges on the long rail on that side of the table, and, you know, if it's level or it's in a thousandth of an inch, I'm going to call that level. And so I turned all the uh, cards over because an arrow is going to be wrong if it's level. So no information means it's level and an arrow means that it's low in the direction it's pointing at. So we can see this end rail is level, that rail is level. And now we're going to do the same procedure we did on the 
on the other rail on this one, it's low, 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 low. So this is the lowest spot. The arrow is pointing to where you should adjust first. So we're going to put some pressure on this wedge just to start with. And because it's fairly low, I'm going to, if you can see the, uh, if you can see the uh, bubble of the level, I'm actually going to pull it past level because it's so low on the outside edges that you know, we have to raise this up. I want to raise both sides, I'm just raising this side first. See, if you can see the level, it's it's almost aligned high this way now. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and get it back to where it's roughly level. It's pretty close to level right there. Now, put a zero here, it's level for right now. That's going to change so in a minute. Now, so I'm going to take, we're going to have to move the bubble about, uh, take three thousandths, make this level. So it's still low in this direction, but not as much as it was before. And this one, we are about 13 thousandths low. So it's come up a little bit. It was 16. So raising those middles helped that. Look on this side and see what we get. And actually, uh, it's two thousandths low in that direction. And then, and it's about eleven thousandths low, so that one came up. Still low this way, so now we're 11 and 2, so we have a, an adjacent low low. So I'll just go ahead and put some pressure here because I got two low spots. And then at 13 thousandths low on the end measurement, 3 thousandths low towards the side pocket on that measurement, it's level across here. So we're going to put a little pressure here and then more pressure on the two across the side pockets, and that'll get us closer to our, our objective. I keep forgetting this is the drill with the 7 16 That's for opening the doors on the bottom of the table. Now I raise that one up to where it's about 3,000 slow. And I should have raised this one up to now it's about that way. By about 6,000. Now our arrow's pointing that way. And this was level before. Now it's about 3,000 slow this way. Now the reason I'm turning these cards over is to show you the effect of raising a wedge, how it affects other wedges. So, you know, now this is reading low, low, and low that way. Before it was low here, low here, and low here. So by raising this wedge, it this went from being low this way to low this way, and it also raised this up enough to where it was low on the other side of the side pocket. So again, my arrows are pointing this way, and they're pointing this way, so now that's my low spot. So that's telling me where I need to go next to make my next adjustment. So right now I'm just going to raise this one up until it's level or slightly more than level. Back here. Is this one good? So 
This one now is this level. This one now is reading this a hair low this way, but it's basically level. And this one still should be reading low this way, but less low than it was before, which it is. So now we're going to raise this up a little bit. up a little bit. So now we're three thousandths close from here to here. Level there. And it's about two thousand slow on this across the side pocket. And this measurement we are. One thousand slow this way. I'm going to show it just for purposes of illustration more than anything else. And this one I'm reading you know, maybe a thousand slow that way. So technically I have a low low even though it's not very much. And I'm three thousandths, I'm level. I'm two thousandths, one and one. So, you know, by our guidelines, this was this was within tolerance. So it's it's less than five thousandths of an inch off of the span from the corner pocket to the side pocket for both directions. Now we'll revisit this end rail again. Anytime I'm raising the side rails, you know, it can it can throw me off on the end rails a little bit. It still looks pretty good. Legit. And I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this one until I uh, get that thousandth out of there since I have two low, um, a low spot that's adjacent to each other. Reading about the same as it was before. So now, I think the uh, you know, the sides are good. That end is good. I'm gonna go take a look at that end right there because I, I had those arrows pointing from me that it was five thousand slow and five thousand slow. Let's see if, if that's still the case. If it is, then we're gonna put some pressure on the center wedge just to make that go away. And then we'll take a look at the center of the table next. a little bit low this way. And a little bit low this way. So it's, the profile has changed a little bit by bending the slate over there. 
So now it's about two thousandths low this way and two thousandths low that way. Maybe not even quite that much. All right, so that's again within our spec. Uh, all right, well, we've adjusted the wedges around the table now, and it's within tolerance uh, all the way around the table, and it's just a little bit low from here to here towards the center, a little bit low on that side. It's a slightly low this way, and a little bit low, a little bit low. So uh, we made the measurement in the absolute center to see which side of the middle is the lowest. It's this side, and then, you know, that spot over there is the lowest spot. So we're going to start by putting pressure right there. Again, our arrows are sort of you know, pointing in the direction of where we want them uh, to, to put pressure on the table. Now, you can see this low, low this way. When I put pressure on that one, it's gonna bring that up and it's also gonna help these two measurements a little bit. Now, honestly, you know, this table is, is fine the way it is right now. It's only three thousandths low that way, two thousandths low that way, two thousandths and three thousandths. So this is more for illustration purposes than it is uh, to make the table play better. Although, in reality, I like to get the middle as good as I can get it because, you know, that affects the way the balls roll lengthwise down the table, and that's one of the more important aspects. Now, uh, while we're on the subject of the middle, um, something that's frequently overlooked when we put these tables in. Uh, is when we get finished leveling the table and everything looks good, if, if the center was good that required no adjustment, we should still pull the wedges out until they're touching the bottom of the slate and the slate is being supported in all four spots. Um, and then obviously if we adjust them so they're putting pressure on the slate, then they're supporting the slate so there's no other adjustments necessary there. If we get a situation where the, the slate is slightly crowned where it's high in the center, then you know, I'll leave a little space between the wedge and the slate in case the slate wants to relax back down to flat. Um, but for the most part, when we get finished, we wanna make sure that all four wedges are at least supporting the slate, and then where it's actually low, we want it actually putting pressure where it's raising the slate. Now, one thing to be careful about with the center is slate is kind of a misunderstood material. Mentally, everybody thinks of it a rock, which technically it is, but it's a flexible rock. And when I put pressure in the middle, if I raise this wedge right here until this read absolute zero, it was perfectly level, I could come back in an hour or two hours and it would read slightly high here. Because just like in geology, rocks are formed by time and pressure. When I put pressure on the slate and I look at the bubble and it looks like it's level, well that slate is still moving, but it's moving so slowly that I can't see the bubble moving. And if I come back in an hour or two, it's actually moved a thousandths or two. So I try not to, to slam it all the way up to level because I know that the pressure is, is continuing to want to push the slate up until it reaches a state of equilibrium. So I don't like to get it all the way to absolute perfect, uh, you know, unless it's like for a tournament match or something where it's going to be used right now. But for a permanent installation, no, I want it to be just a hair low. And as long as I know I have pressure under there, it's still coming up. Now, when I say hair low, I'm talking you know, less than two thousandths of an inch, or maybe even less than that, because it won't move a lot, but it does move some. I've seen it just like this, where we have all these chalk marks on the table, and I had level sitting on the table with the measurements, put some pressure on the center of the table, remeasured everything, and then left, it came back the next day, and it was different. And that's, that's how I discovered it myself. I didn't really realize that until I saw it firsthand. So now we're going to put some pressure on that wedge over there. There are four access doors underneath the table. So I'm going to disappear under the table with a, uh, uh, a, an automotive creeper so I don't have to get my back on the floor here. And I'm going to take my, my right angle attachment on my drill. And I'm going to take the other impactor because it's got the right socket on it for opening the access door. And then I'm going to put a little pressure on the slate right here. And I just noticed a little boo-boo. A -boo. little boo-boo is this. It is a little bit low that way. So it's low, low, and low. So like I said, the arrows are pointing. This side's low, and it's low here, and it's more low 
here because it's coming low, low. So this is the lowest spot right here. Again, the arrows kind of point to where it's low. Just like that. Arrow, 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 arrow. And that's, that's pointing to where it's the lowest. So when I adjust the middles, all of it comes up a little bit. That's why I want to start in the lowest spot. And that putting pressure there will make those other measurements slightly better. It won't fix them completely probably, but it'll probably make them to where all I need to do is just raise them up until they're touching the slate. Okay, we've got our access door open. I like these little drills because they have a little little LED flashlight. It's dark under the table and it lets me see what I'm doing. So now, when I'm by myself, I do this by feel and I just let the drill run slowly. And then when I feel the drill starting to drag, I know that it's working to, to pull the wedge and be just pushing against the slate. And since this doesn't need to be adjusted much, I'm just waiting for it so I can feel that. Okay. Not quite there yet. Close. I can do it with a socket wrench, I can feel the drag on the socket wrench, or you can hear the sound of the drill when it drops in the tone a little bit, like it's working harder. And yeah, that one now is absolutely level. And this one is... thousands of miles this way, which is really unimportant. But I'm putting the numbers up here so you can see how they interact with each other. This one is about a thousandth of an inch. So technically I have a low low, but it's hard to move the slate just a thousandth of an inch. And then the absolute center, thousands of an inch low that way now. So now it looks like this. So it's level, a thousand slow, a thousand slow, a thousand slow that way. I put just a little bit of pressure over there. This one came up about a thousandth of an inch. So instead of being three thousand slow, it's two thousand slow. level. And that one is level. So we're 2,000 slow, level, level, 1,000 slow, 1,000 slow, 1,000 slow, and level. So I mean, if I was trying to dial it in perfect, I'd put a little bit more pressure on that ledge right there. And that would make both of those measurements better. And, uh, but that'd be about it. Now, the rest of it, I go open all, all the rest of the doors and pull the wedge out until it's touching the slate, so it's actually supporting the slate, and then run the bolt in until it's flush with the bracket that, that holds it to the table. 
and that way I know that it's supporting the slate. And then this table is level.